The second section is about that same formula, just with a brand new twist. So now we know, given some function sine of x, we can find the area underneath the curve. We can calculate the volume if we rotate about a horizontal or vertical line. We can approximate the value of it using a Taylor series expansion. And we can find the arc length of the sine curve now. Although that would require Simpson's rule just because the integration is real terrible. But now we're going to focus on something called the surface area if you had revolved the function about a horizontal or a vertical line. Not the area, but the surface area. How much paint would it take to paint the surface after we, re we rotate around? To motivate this, let's derive a general formula. So here we have an interval. Let's just go from 0 to pi over 2 for the sine curve. I hope you don't mind, but that just seems like a right thing to do. And let's pretend we're rotating that about the x-axis. And we want to find the amount of paint it would require to paint that after it's rotated, after rotation. Believe it or not, this is going to be basically what we just learned. That's what I'm saying. These sections are fast because they piggyback on each other quite a bit. So imagine you want to rotate this about. So I'm just going to showcase the rotation. I'm not going to compute the rotation. I'm just showcasing it. There we go. And there's a little thin strip here that we want to paint. We actually want to paint the entire surface, but I'm going to use the i-th slice. All right, and we want to paint this ith slice, just the outside of it. I don't want to find the volume. I just want to find how much paint it would take to paint that entire strip. Well, I hope you know that paint is a surface area, like the amount of paint you use is a surface area. In fact, that's what this is called. It's called a surface area, right? Let's uh, highlight those words, surface area right there. We now focus on surface area. Well... If I can find this distance right here, which I will call ds, oh, we already have found that distance. Good for us. That distance is ds. It's either the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared, dx, or it's the square root of dx dy squared plus 1 dy. We know what that is. We're going to take that little thin piece of paint there, and we're going to rotate it around. Rotate this arc of paint around, and here's your clue, the circumference. of the solid. So we are essentially going to do this. We're going to, the surface area, and this is why I didn't use S earlier, is because I use that for surface area. That makes sense. The surface area, we're just going to add up a bunch of paint strips. Each paint strip has an arc And it has a circumference. We're moving that arc through a circumference. And we're going to do that from A to B. Does that make sense that you're, you take this little paint strip right here? It's, it's better when I'm in a classroom. But does it make sense that you're taking this little paint strip right here? And then you're basically saying, okay, just rotate that paint strip all the way around through this circumference. And that will be how much paint I use. It's just that width times the circumference, that's it. Now remember, circumference is two pi r, isn't it? So this is gonna be the integral, a to b, of two pi r ds. Done. 
These are a lot easier, by the way, than just standard arc lengths. Why are they easier? That radius of rotation, that gives us a variable, generally in this case, it would be whatever the Y value is here. The radius of rotation is just a distance from the, let me get a, let me clean this up slightly. It gives us a distance from the axis of rotation to our paint strip. That is R, which is equal to the radius of rotation. And that generally makes our integration much easier. It doesn't always, but it generally can. Okay. So that's the general formula and just hopping over just to showcase it. There it is. Surface area of a solid of a rev revolution. Circumference times arc length. Really a very beautiful, fast formula. Advice, surface area integrals can often be done using any combination of variables. However, try not to use a variable that will not make a function. Well, okay. So that, that advice kind of goes along with the last example we did where we had our choice. Do you want to do this with respect to X or with respect to Y? That will often be the case now where you can ask yourself that question. You can make the world much easier, or at least the integral, much easier by making the appropriate choice. And it just takes a few moments at the very beginning to set it up, to see like, which one of these would I like to differentiate? Which, you know, that type of thing. Uh, also, this is kind of a note that I don't think needs to be mentioned technically right now but I'll just say it anyway. Since the integrand, which is two pi r circumference times the arc length, since that's not negative, you don't have to worry about negative integrals as long as the limits of integration go from low to high. That's the same thing with arc lengths, by the way. So uh, both arc lengths and surface areas, you're never going to get a negative value. If you do, you did something wrong. All right, let's see the mechanics of this. It's incredibly nice mechanics. So let's go, notice by the way, I'm saying now, determine the surface area of the sign. No, the last example or the last section, I didn't say let's find the actual arc length of the sign because that leads to the square root of one plus cosine squared. And integrating that, you're only gonna be able to do that using left endpoint method, right endpoint method, midpoint method, Simpson's rule, that type of thing. So it's kind of a pain, but surface area is much easier, even though it's a more involved integral. So somebody says, hey, I've got a function. I want to find its surface area after rotating about who cares. I'm going to say, great, without even knowing your function, I know the surface area. It's just going to be, I'll start slicing at some value and slicing at some other value, circumference. times arc length. Let's just do it that way. Let's use language for the moment. But circumference is two pi r. And arc length, we call ds. Once I write the letters ds, I've got choice. Do I want to integrate with respect to x or with respect to y? They've given me that y is equal to sine of x. I can just visualize right now, if I want to solve that for X, I'd get X equals sine inverse of Y. I don't want to deal with that. So I'll leave this as Y equals sine of X. And I'm going to do this entire integral with respect to X. We're rotating about the X axis from zero to pi. We're going to have an area that we paint. I'll just make a big paint strip right there. That's our DS. You're going to rotate that around. And you're going to paint that. It's DS times circumference, which we wrote earlier. And our radius of rotation is from the axis of rotation to where our paint strip is. That's our radius of rotation. 
So let's go ahead and start inserting values. This equals two. I'm going to factor out the two pi because that's just a constant. We're going from x equals zero to x equals pi. We have a radius of rotation, which is actually a y value in this case. Y top minus y bottom, you can think of it that way, right? And then we have the arc length, which is a square root of one plus dy dx squared dx. Looking through this integral, you can see that our limits of integration are x's. Our integral is with respect to x. We've got a little bit of a problem right here. Our radius of rotation is a y, but we could trade that out. We know what y is in terms of x. It's sine of x. So let's go ahead and insert sine of x for y. And then we have the square root of one plus the sine of x derivative, which is cosine of x squared dx. Now you can do a substitution. And there are a couple ways you could do a substitution here, by the way. Um, Let's see, what's kind of the easiest method? I was thinking like, let u equal the cosine. That'll work fine, I guess. Um, if you did u equals one plus cosine squared, that'd give me a two cosine. I don't have a coast to steal away. So I guess the easiest way here would be the cosine. Oh, yeah, I'll let u equal cosine. I'm sure there's a faster way. But if you let u equal cosine, then du will steal away a negative sine of x dx. We don't have a negative to steal, so I'm going to place that negative out on the other side. And uh, our limits of integration are going to change as well. Negative 2 pi integral u equals, well, an x is 0. Cosine of x is 1. When x is pi, cosine of pi is a negative 1. We're stealing away the sine of x and the dx. We're trading those out for a du. And we have the square root of 1 plus u squared. And then you can change the limits of integration or flip them because that negative on the outside. Now, I may have mentioned this early in the course, but try to use symmetry as much as possible. The symmetry here for this integral, now that we've arrived at this, this function is an even function. That is the area on the left side of the y-axis is the same as the area underneath the curve on the right side of the y-axis. So I could change this integral to go from zero to one and double up its value. And from this point forward, you can do a trig sub and finish out this integral. I'm not going to bother with it, but you can do a trig sub and finish out this integral. It'd be one plus tan. So you do a tan sub, right? U is equal to tangent of theta and finish dot, dot, dot. Okay. That's actually, to be honest with you, that one is actually probably a harder 
not the integral itself, but just, just the entire problem is one of the harder surface area integrals because of the fact that you have to do a, not only a U sub, but a trig sub at the very end. Um, it is what it is, right? But we know that one plus tan squared is going to be the secant squared. So I can do a trig sub of U equals tangent in there uh, and then integrate and finish that out. So there we go. That's that. Questions on any part of the setup there. I didn't bother finishing that out because I, you guys can finish out the integral, but I just want to make sure that um, I didn't lose anybody within the integral itself. You can see <clears throat> that we're still just, the entire day is focused on really one major constant, arc length. The rest of the course is actually. So arc length, which is DS, ends up being incredibly important as we move forward. If we have time at the very, very end, which we might, do I have an online here? Yeah, I do. So this is our last example. If we have time at the end of this, I'll go back and finish out that other one. Okay. So here's another one. Determine the surface area of the solid obtained by rotating the given function about the given line. And we're rotating about the Y axis here. A quick picture of this might help out. So cube root looks something like that. Y equals the cube root of X, but we're only rotating from Y equals zero or one to two. So it might be like this and we're rotating it about the Y axis from Y equals one to Y equals two. Now I'm not finding the volume. I'm just finding the surface area. Again, determine surface area. Okay. Somebody says, find the surface area. I actually like surface area more than I like volumes because they're just easier. I think they're much easier than volume problems. And I happen to know the surface area is just the summation of circumference times arc length. Or in other words, I take an arc and rotate it around a circumference. That's really what I'm doing. And we're going to do this. I will just buy into what they tell me to do here. I'm going to do this with respect to X. Actually, no. I'm going to do this with respect to Y. X is equal to Y cubed. Why not? <laughs> That's funny. All right. So let's do this with respect to Y instead. I'll factor out the two pi. I'm starting at Y equals one. I'm going to Y equals two. We have that uh, R. And R in this case, by the way, is the radius from the axis of rotation to the function itself. That's the radius. So that's actually going to be an X value. Let me go ahead and write that in. I wrote it in red so that you know that's not going to work. We got to do something with that. And then I have my DS, which the version of DS I'm going to work with is the one that has DX DY squared in it. Let's go ahead and find out what DX DY is. Yay. Now you want to square that. Actually, I can just do that over here. Let's see, we want to integrate, we want to trade out that X. X is Y cubed. DX DY squared is nine Y to the fourth. And then a plus one. And here is, this is a great example as why as to why I say surface area or surface integral, surface area uh, integrals are much nicer than just arc lengths. Can you see that a U sub is going to be really powerful here? <laughs> a U sub is going to do most of our work. If you let U equal 9Y to the fourth plus one, then DU will have to steal away a 36Y cubed DY. Well, I don't have a 36, 
but I definitely am a two Y cube DY. So I'll just say that DU over, that was supposed to be a DU, over 18 will be a two Y cubed DY. That is this DY, this Y cubed, and that two will be stolen out for a 1 18th DU. When y is 1, u is 10. When y is 2, u is abusively large. <laughs> 2, 4, 16, 160, uh, 160, 50, 44, 45. Double check my math, but I think that's correct. And then we have the square root of u left over. That'll be one eight. And I'll just write as pi over 18. Pi over 18 uh, times the antiderivative of u to the one half is u to the three halves times two thirds. And we're evaluating that from 10 to 145. Let's see, two goes in 18, nine times three is 27. So pi over 27 times uh, 145 to the three halves minus 10 to the three halves. That is the surface area had you rotated that curve about the y-axis. Again, nothing else is in these sections. I promise you, there's nothing else in here. It's just... Arc length, arc length, arc length. Oh, and by the way, if I want to find the surface area, multiply arc length by circumference. Bam. Now, I did say that if I had time, I want to hop back to the previous example to finish it out. Why don't we? Let's go ahead and finish this out. If you were tangent... I was trying to think of a joke there, but I couldn't fill, fill one in. If you were tangent... You would be obtuse? No, that's not right. I don't know. Anyway, if you were tangent, then du would be secant squared. Theta d theta. And so we get the following. Or pi integral. Uh, let's see. Tangent of zero. Sorry. Z if u is zero, tangent of theta being zero implies theta is zero. If u were 1, tangent of theta equaling 1 implies theta equals pi over 4. du gets stolen out for a secant squared of theta, d theta. And we have the square root of 1 plus tangent squared of theta, which, by the way, is a secant of theta. And so we get our very favorite secant cubed integral. And remember, the integral of secant cubed is actually half the derivative of the secant plus half the integral of the secant. That's the best way to remember that. So uh, this will be 4 pi times the quantity. It'll be half the derivative of the secant plus half the integral of the secant. And that one you might not remember, but it's the natural log absolute value of secant plus tangent. And you will evaluate this from zero uh, to pi over four. At zero, by the way, this will be zero. So I'm, I'm not going to bother with that. But at pi over four, you get the following. Uh, and I'm going to factor out the half, if you don't mind. So at pi over four, secant of pi over four is root two. Tangent of pi over four is one. Well... That's it. There we go. Okay, so it didn't take very much extra time to finish out that other example. There you go. Um, I will actually can the two extra videos today. I'll just uh, if they they're going to be short. Honestly, um, I'll actually go forward a little bit just to showcase what the the one of them I'm going to deal with 
this one um the reason why this works better canned than live is because you're doing simpsons method to approximate the surface area and actually you know what i might do with this one i actually might go ahead and i'll just say it out loud now so i'm going to remind myself arc length too I'll do the arc length of this as well. So you get an extra arc length example in there. So that's that one. You'll get an extra arc length and uh, a um, surface area using Simpsons uh, rule. Both of them are going to have to use Simpsons rule, honestly. And then the other one that will be online is going to be this bad boy right here. Actually, not bad, but this is just creating the arc length function. And so mechanically, it takes about a minute to do, but I want to just talk about it. And so it takes a little bit longer to do that. Finally, the last thing I want to mention here before we uh, break be, um, for the day, and then I, we have office hours at nine, if, you, if you're so interested, is that section 8.3, we already did half that section, believe it or not, when we were in section 6.4. So that half is already done. That was hydrostatic force and pressure. It's not that big of a deal. But the second half of 8.3, which we'll do on Wednesday, there is a video that I canned literally 11 years ago. Um, it's 15, no, I think it's 15 or 16 minutes long. And that video is the finite case of what we call centers and uh, moments and centers of mass. So it's, 15 minutes that cover this topic, this topic, this topic, and that topic, I think maybe, and that one too. The reason why I do that prior to class is because there's zero calculus in it. There's no calculus at all. It's actually arithmetic and algebra. But I just want you to get the idea of what a center or moment of mass is before we start the calculus version of it on Wednesday. So, uh, and it's not hard at all, at all. It's just, you know, I would love it if you were to spend 15 minutes of your time between now and Wednesday watching that um, so that when you come to class on Wednesday, it won't be, wait a minute, this is the center of mass or, you know, anything like that. It's, it's actually pretty nice stuff. All right. So we are done for today. I'll be back in 10 minutes for office hours. It was great to see you guys. Remember, Integration Bees uh, this upcoming Friday. I hope you signed up. If you did not, you're still welcome to watch. Um, it's uh, just a fun event. Um, I wish it were on ground because it's a blast on ground. We get around 60 or so contestants, and uh, it's just an amazing time. Um, anyhow, uh, thank you for those who did sign up. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, Wednesday or in 10 minutes, whichever you choose. All right, take care.